uh, in this patient I am giving brachial plexus block so let me explain some of the basic uh, anatomy here this is the suprasternal notch or space of burn here and thoracic you can notice sternal right muscle this is the two head of the sternocleidomastoid okay this is sternocleidomastoid now if i put the finger over the external cleidomastoid and roll it laterally from here you we'll just roll it laterally now the tip of the finger is now over the scalenus anticus this is scalenus anticus now we further roll the tip of the index finger further laterally we can find the scalenus medius and literal posterior direction now my finger is in between a cleft between the scalenus anticus and scalenus medius so this is basically a inter scalenic cleft so this is a scalenus now we when we roll the tip of the finger down i can feel a transverse bend that transverse bend represents the inferior valley of the omohyoid so there is a triangle that is a uh, inter scalenic triangle that's my technique inter scalenic triangle the triangle in between these two and the base of the triangle is the inferior belly of the omohyoid so now if i put the finger on this roll it laterally it is just over the scalenus anticus further we can the tip of the finger dips in a cleft that cleft is in between the scalenus anticus and scalenus medius now from here if i roll my finger down further down now the something strikes that is the inferior valley of the omohyoid so the point of entry is just above the inferior valley of omohyoid in inter scalenic cleft so <coughs> while inserting the needle we just press this cleft to keep apart the scalenus anticus and scalenus medius so the link membrane between the two muscles becomes quite taut and we will insert the needle here and instill nearly 15 to 20 ml of the solution in adult in this space and we never try to elicit paresthesia accidentally it may happen but initially our purpose is not to elicit paresthesia by touching the nerves of the brachial plexus just put the finger in the inter scalenic cleft it should be seen in the chip Yes. Now insert the needle and And see, this should not happen. Either you withdraw or just withdraw it. Withdraw it. And then change the direction of the needle. And move further slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly. Now stabilize and then confirm. Again, the blood is there. Then move is further and check there is there it, it is still there. See, it is still there. And either you withdraw the syringe or move further down, wait for some time, some time and check there should not be any blood in aspirate. And this is the way to avoid the accidental intravascular injection. If there is accidental injection, you may notice there is sudden rise of the pulse because of adenine in the solution. So stabilize it, check it. and wait.
again rotate the syringe inject aspirate and the pulse is stable that is between 77 or 80 right If there is cuff, you might notice that there is a pleural puncture also. So take precaution. Cuff indicate pleural puncture. Just withdraw the needle a little bit and don't inject in the pleura. Have you not seen it? No, it's already. Cuff means uh, touching the pleura. So just withdraw the needle. And always be careful to avoid the accidental intravascular. Be slow and gentle. Take your own time. <laughs> <laughs> 